Hey everyone, welcome to the follow-up episode with the, uh, while well, we were discussing the Leechy anti-aliasing settings, and uh, I do have the final prints, uh, I have some footage of the final prints, uh, removing them and cleaning them, so you guys can see exactly how they look without any alterations or finishing done whatsoever, as I promised. Um, here they are, completely finished, I have all of them here, all four of the big guys. As, uh, that was the, the pieces we were using for demonstration. Um, and not as good, not as easy to see on the camera here when I'm doing the in, uh, standstill recording, but my other camera can take some better shots of this, and you'll see some of the detail on this uh, a little bit easier uh, when I show some of that footage. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and put on some of that footage and let y'all uh, take a look at the results. All right, now we're taking a look at the build plates before I pretty much did anything. Uh, yeah, I sped this up a little bit because it's a little boring. You don't really get to see what I'm doing because that's off camera to the, to the left uh, of, what I'm, of where the stuff is sitting. So that first batch there, smooth surface, 30%, two pixels, HD off. One next to it's the anti-aliasing off. And then we have the smooth surfaces 4 pixel 50% HD on. And then above that is the smooth surfaces 2 pixel HD on 30%. Uh, I just didn't, the card is not in camera's view at the moment. Although I'll put it down in a second. Maybe. Anyway, like I said, this takes a minute. We break all this stuff out of the supports. And then I'm just going to do the actual visual comparison once I put these through the cleaning and the curing process. Okay, here we are. Now I went ahead and labeled everything, put them in bags, and made sure that I knew exactly what I was looking at because I didn't want to confuse myself later, nor did I want to confuse anyone else when I was doing the visual comparison. So each bag has uh, the individual uh, little card there that has the type of aliasing that was used. First one I pulled out here is the no anti-aliasing. Um, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it on the camera, but the no anti-aliasing version actually has some really wicked layer lines right there towards the nose. Um, I expected this. Um, there's also a wicked layer line that kind of goes like right around the entire print itself. Uh, and that's a little bit harder to see, but it is there. But the nose is very evident. There's very, very deep layer lines there towards the nose. Otherwise, I think the print came out okay. Nothing you couldn't fix very easily with some sanding. But the no anti-aliasing is definitely noticeable when you take a look at that, the, the dome for sure. That creates a lot of problems, those rounded areas and stuff like that. That's kind of why I chose these objects. Like I said, you can see some layer lines in the nose. Um, it's not too bad. I could fix that with like a couple minutes of sanding, not terrible. I mean, you can it's definitely noticeable though. I think that's the, the bottom line is no aliasing means you're definitely going to see more layer lines for sure. Now, if I was doing him at a higher, a lower layer, light, layer height, he probably wouldn't have as many deep lines, but still there's also, again, I, it, you just want to use some sort of anti-aliasing, just to make an example. This next one is the 2 pixel 30% HD off. And it caught two little dots right in the nose. And I'm not really sure what the dots were from exactly. This is one of those anomaly things that just happens. So that's that. Uh, then we have the 4 pixel. 50% setting. Uh, and this is the setting I recommended for those using 8K. Uh, you can even go as high as uh, six per six pixel or pixels, uh, six pixels and a 70% uh, gray offset if you want to. But I usually just will use this if I'm going that high. And we'll take a look here at the print. 
it's a it's difficult. I was trying to get the best focus possible. Really show y'all. There you go. That's a good shot. So this is really super smooth. Very little noticeable layer lines. Just the tip itself has maybe a little bit of a layer line showing there right at the very tip. The last couple layers. Overall, really nice. Came out nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. That, that is, again, that's the settings are 4 pixels and 50% gray with the HD on. So maybe the HD does make a little bit of a difference um, when it comes to how that's going to work. So, I don't know, this one is the 30% 2 pixels HD on. And this is the setting I usually use, just to give you all an example. And pretty comparable to the one I just showed you, not too much of a difference. Looks pretty good. So the two best ones in my opinion are the 2 pixel 30% HD on and the 2 pixel 50% HD or sorry 4 pixel 50% HD on. Um, those look the best out of all of them. Uh, the No AA has wicked layer lines going on. The HD off does seem to make a little bit of a difference. Um, I think what we saw was the 2 pixel 30% actually looked better with the HD render on than it did with it off. So I think that answers that question as is it worth it to wait the extra time when you're slicing to run the HD uh, render? Uh, I think the answer is actually yes, it does actually make a difference. So uh, there you go, there's the answer. I, I personally wasn't really sure up until recently, but I always just ran with it on just to make sure that I was going to get the best quality possible. And it's funny, you can see the two to the right there. Uh, there you go. Uh, put the names up on top so you see which ones are which. And uh, yeah, we're going to do a couple more shots here in a second. You'll see them a little bit better. There you go, a little overhead. And that should give you a better example of what they look like. I'm just going to go ahead and pick up each one and just give you a little close-up shot of each one. I do apologize, the camera was constantly unfocusing on them. It was trying to focus on one in the background or whatever. Um, but here's a little, you know, give you a little sign and top views. There's the little dimple in the front. Not too bad. An object like this is always going to have a little bit more suction just due to its shape. But if you can manage to get these good with good anti-aliasing settings, you're in a good shape. Huh. That's, that's a 3D printer joke there for you. You're in good shape. Might be a little bit of my dad jokes coming out. Sorry. Anyway, these uh, these all came out fine. Like I said, nothing some sanding won't fix. He's got a little bit of a ding there in his forehead. Probably from support removal. Um... But otherwise, yeah, all good. I put them on top of each one of the cards so you can see which ones go with each setting. Um, and if you need to, you can go back to the um, shot where I have all the names labeled over the top of them. Give you an idea. This one, like I said, caught those two little tiny dots, which is common with domes. And that was with the HD off. Same setting as the one next to it there to the left, but with the HD off. And, and, and instead of on. So there you go. I think it does actually make a difference to the uh, to the folks that have been asking me. Yes, yes it does. I think it does make a difference. And there's that wicked layer line right there. Mm. Nice layer line there. Um, definitely some more layer lines in general. Definitely going to use a little bit more sanding on this one than the other ones. Probably some wet sanding. But there you go. That's the uh, difference between those settings. If you want good print aliasing, I'm going to suggest going with 2 pixels 30% HD on or 4 pixels 50% HD on as your default settings. Either one of those should work fine. If you're working on 4K or less, go with the 30% 2 pixels. If you're working on 8K, go with the 4 pixel 50%. I mean, even if you are working on 4K, I guess you could go with the higher settings and just give that a shot and see if... 
um, that works better for you. Because I do think there is a subtle difference there with the 4 pixel and 50% versus 2 pixel and 30%. I think there is a little bit of a difference. So give it a shot. See what works best for you. And uh, take it from there. Anyway, that's it for this two-part episode on Lychee's anti-aliasing settings. And I hope that this helped explain how the settings work and how they can work to benefit your prints. It's not always a perfect solution. They won't always come out absolutely flawless. And it doesn't mean you won't have to pick up a sanding stick ever again. It just means that more than likely, you're probably going to see less layer lines. Now remember, if you reduce your layer height and you make the layers thinner, you're probably going to see them less anyway. So this is also something you can think of accompanying along with your aliasing settings to reduce the layer lines that are visible on your actual print when they're done. I hope this helped a bunch of you. I, and if it did, great. Please don't forget to smash that like button as well. And, and also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. It does actually help us quite a lot. We are planning a lot of new content in the next year, and we hope to grow the channel continuously as we do. We thank you guys so much for the support, and um, as in case anyone hasn't noticed, we did finally reach 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you all so very much for helping us get there. See you all real, real soon.